Hello and welcome back to another FL Studio 20 basics video. Today I'm going to be showing you two really simple methods of side chaining in FL Studio 20. The first method involves setting up a side chain using the fruity limiter, and the second easy method uses a plugin called Grossby. In order to side chain, you're going to need to know what you want to side chain. So usually this will be a kick and a bass, and every time the kick hits, you will be taking away volume from the bass, but you can side chain anything. It could be a super saw, you could be side chaining a snare to a guitar, it could be absolutely absolutely anything. In my case, I'm going to be side chaining kick and bass, so I need to make sure that I've sent the kick and the bass to a unique place on the mixer. And then from the mixer, I'm going to take my kick and I'm going to find where the bass is, which is over here, it's called sub. I'm going to go down to this little arrow at the bottom, I'm going to right click and select side chain to this track. You can see that it's connected by this green cable. At the moment, no volume is being sent from the kick to the sub-channel, it's only the waveform information. If you turn this dial round, the volume will be sent to the sub-channel, but we don't want this for this technique, so keep this all the way down at zero. The next thing you need to do is go onto the channel that's being side-chained, in this case it's the sub. I'm going to go to the effects chain and I'm going to load in a fruity limiter plugin. So I go select and I'll find the fruity limiter, it's up in the dynamics section, and then it will load up like this. Now, the first thing I do is probably say to resize it a little bit. All of these plugins are resizable, which makes it nice and easy to see what you're doing. Leave the limiter section alone and click down to the compression section here. Now on the side chain input here, we're gonna right click and select the kick. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna show you the sub and the kick together. So you can really hear that the kick and the sub are interfering with each other. Now if I go back to the Fruity Limiter plugin, I'm going to start adjusting these dials until we get some side chaining. The first thing to do is to turn down the threshold and turn up the ratio or the knee until we hear some side chaining happening. And already you can see visibly that volume is being taken away from the sub here. I'm also going to open up this Edison that I have loaded here after the sub to show you visibly what's happening to the waveform. The signal without side chaining will look like this. Just a completely flat waveform. If I turn on the side chaining, We can see by comparing the two waveforms that without side chaining we just have a solid sub and then with the side chaining volume is being taken away from the start to give space to the kick. At this point we have some basic side chaining going but you'll want to listen to the whole song and adjust the attack and release and the sustain and all the other dials together until it's really working with your song. The one thing I would mention is that if you make the release too short it's going to start distorting your sub bass so you want to make sure that you have a decent release time. That distortion might actually be favorable in your song but most of the time it isn't. Now I'm going to listen to the whole mix and I'm going to see if I can get this sounding the way that I want. I feel that with the side chaining on it was adding a lot more rhythm into the track. That's pretty much how you do it with the fruity limiter method and I'd just like to remind you that you can side chain anything to anything else. In this case it was just a sub but I could have side chained my entire bass channel. I could make a separate subgroup just for instruments or elements that I want to side chain and I could use any trigger to side chain that. It doesn't have to be a kick, it could be a snare, it could be a shaker, it could be a guitar. Trust me all of these things work great in different situations. Now on to part two and this is sort of a cheats method but it works great for uh, any kind of uh, four on the floor rhythm or sort of repeated kick pattern so you can ignore the side chaining from the past it's not important so I'm going to unlink it and all you have to do is look at the channel that you'd like to be side chained and in a new effects slot I'm going to add the gross beat plugin or gross beat I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced it's in miscellaneous down here and again this interface is completely resizable so make it fit your screen up here you have the time manipulation section we don't to look at that. Down here we have the volume manipulation section so I'm going to select sidechain which is a handy preset and I'll listen to this just playing the sub. You can already hear that we've got that sort of pumping effect. You can also right click on all of these points to reset them and you can drag them around however you like. So let's take another listen. and really sort of tailor it to the sound you want. And when you're doing this, it's okay to listen in solo to get started, 
but like anything else, you want to listen to everything together and see whether it sounds good in the context of the mix. So you can really get a feel for which sort of curves work in your song. And the only other point I'd mention about this one is that there's a few handy dials down here that can really help you shape the sound. I'm going to use the Edison again to show you the differences that these dials make. This volume dial here is pretty much a wet and dry effect, so you can have full side chaining or none or anywhere in between. The other three dials are attack, release, and tension, and you can see and hear what these do to the signal. You can see that between all of those controls, you have the ability to really manipulate this the way you want. The last thing I'd mention is all of those sort of clicks and pops and sort of sucking up and down sounds that you sort of heard there. They're not always as bad as they sound. When you play everything together, often they are completely masked and when you've got the kick playing on top of them, you'd never know it's there anyway. So you can try to minimize that, but it's not always as essential. And this is why it really is important to listen to everything together when you're side chaining. So that's it for this video. I hope you've learned two really simple ways to side chain inside FL Studio. And if anyone's wondering, the song that I was playing back inside here is our original song. It's called Nothing To Lose. And I'll leave a link in the description in case anyone would like to take a listen to that. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I do hope to see you in future videos. Bye for now. Always find a way to end